following video presentation is designed to address some of the major issues involved in yam production. The aim is to provide sound advice and guidelines to farmers so that they may maximize their yields profitably using scientific methods and best practice. Yam is a popular staple grown throughout the region. Apart from being a source of carbohydrate, they are a valuable source of income for several thousand farm families and a foreign exchange owner for many countries. The quality and the quantity of the crop, and hence its competitiveness in the food trade arena, however, depends on the commitment of the farmer, from the preparation of the field to the harvesting of the crop. Two important aspects of yam production are propagation and providing good support to the plant during its growth and development. It is therefore important that farmers pay attention to their selection of planting material. This will determine the quality and quantity of the harvest. Yams can be propagated by various techniques, including mini-setting. In your selection of materials for mini-setting, ensure that they are mature, healthy and undamaged and that they weigh between 2 and 3 pounds. Also, ensure that they show signs of sprouting. The selection of immature tubers for planting will result in a reduction in yields. A clean sharp knife is required for the preparation of the planting material. Cut the tuber into pieces. Each piece is called a miniset. Minisets should have an outer layer of skin and weigh up to 4 ounces. Like other crops, yams are affected by pests, that is, insects and disease agents. Borers, for example, tunnel into the tuber and make it unmarketable and nematodes feed on tubers. To protect your crops from infestation by these pests, it is important that the minisets are treated with an appropriate solution of fungicide and insecticide. Minisets should be submerged in the solution for 15 minutes, removed and spread on a clean surface in a shady area for about 24 hours. Prepare a raised nursery bed about 2 feet wide under the light shade. The length of the bed will depend on the number of minisets used. The bed should be built in layers, with gravel at the bottom to drain excess water. The top layer should be wood shavings or sawdust about half inch thick. It is on this layer that you place your minisets side by side, then cover with more sawdust or wood shavings. The bed must be kept moist to prevent the minisets from drying out. We might recycle the same earth, like here, yam was planted here for about three years ago. Every year, and it's up to five, six years. As long as we control the leafage that was there from last year, that might keep the nematode or the insects around. We try to burn those and try to get rid of those before we go back. But it's a good year for us, even this year. So I'm happy to know that further on, I might continue with my farming. Minisets should sprout in two or three weeks, depending on the variety. As the plants grow, there is need for trellising. Traditionally, farmers went into the forests to cut posts or sticks for trellising the crop as it grows. However, this method has proven to be a challenge in terms of availability, cost, labour and has had negative impacts on the ecology of the farming area. Trellising has had several advantages, including increased yield per acre with the use of ridge formations instead of individual mounds. Trellising is ideal for the farmer who is equally interested in the quality of his produce as well as the quantity he can harvest. Throughout the building process, efforts are made to ensure that the plants are not damaged during windy conditions. Stabilizers are erected to prevent uprooting. The plants are usually spaced out about 18 inches on ridges that are about 3 feet apart. Every step of the trellis construction is meant to assist the farmer being able to move around his farm easier. The advantages are even more evident during harvest. Trellises are built using fence wire and particular attention is paid to the height of the structure. The higher you have your trellis or the higher you have the foliage from the yam, the easier it is for the wind to have it playing up there for you. And the next thing is throw down the trellis. I find it convenient to have my trellis about walking height. 
because from time to time I may have to do something on top of the, the wire. Once the trellis is complete, the vine from the newly sprouted plant is carefully wrapped around the vertical string and away from the ground. Weeding is important throughout the growth of the yam plants, but it is most crucial during the first three months so that the young plants do not have to compete with weeds for sunlight and water. Plants should be fertilized six to eight weeks after planting. Fertilizer should be applied six to eight inches away from the plant and mix well into the soil to prevent it from being washed away. Yams are ready for harvest eight to 11 months after planting. It is important that harvested yams are properly cleaned and placed in a cool, dry environment in preparation for export.